So we're going to start the bag sort for row D and uh, let's get cracking this open. Inside, if I can get in there, you have bag one, cornerstones and lattices, bag two, and one, two, three of these, okay? These are four and a half inch squares. And the designation for these is gonna be on the back. So you go to the back where the notes are. So D3, D4, and D8 are gonna need one of these each. So I'm gonna go right ahead right now and label them so that I know once I get to those blocks, D3, D4, and D8, once I get to those blocks, I will already know that these are there. So three and four are gonna be used for bag one, and this is gonna be the bag one video. So I'm gonna leave these aside for the moment here. This one I'm put back in the bag so that I can do this when I do the bag two video. And then the cornerstones and lattices I'm gonna use when I start uh, assembling my sashing. So I'm gonna set this aside. So we're gonna be working with a booklet and bag number one. So the first thing I do when I open any of these packs is I go through and I find out which one of these have um, English paper piecing corrections, modifications, excuse me. And so D1, D2, D3, D4, D9, and D10, and D12 are modified for English paper piecing. And there's some notes in here that talk about um, various little sections that you're welcome to read. And the little notes on the back talk about how to um, do the assembly. So I'm gonna get my book and I've got it open to the D1 page and it's modified, I got it marked. So we're gonna to go to the booklet for this first one. And I'm gonna pull just this page out because it's usually easier to just deal with one level of paper. So this is the modification and this is the original block. If you want to somehow put this in there, that's fine, but for the uh, pieces, for the English paper pieces, there are no pieces for this cross beam because it's just easier to deal with this. So. Let's dump out our bag and see what we got going on here. If I can get my stuff out of the way. We got this nice big guy. And then we got all these little pieces. So you got these squares and then there's tinier squares, but they're not for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the pieces for this block and as I sort I'm going to put similar shapes with themselves so that I can just go back and refer to this is obviously a bit too big so I will get I will start digging through here and finding the pieces that I need all right so I've located the pieces for this block I've got two of these little strips and they're real narrow. There's a bunch of little strips and stuff, but these are really, really skinny. And there's five smaller squares. One of them is smaller than the other four, obviously. So we're gonna just put that back for another block. And now I'm going to place these in their homes. So now that these pieces are put in their proper location, I'm going to take my little Sharpie and I'm going to label each piece in case they get scattered around for some reason because you just never know. And I'm gonna put D1 on every single one of these. Now that they're labeled, I'm going to mark which ones are focus fabric and the ones that are background, I'm not gonna mark. So in this case, the dark fabric is the focus fabric and the light fabric is the background. So I'm going to dot the squares, since we've removed this diagonal piece, each square is going to be focus fabric. And then 
the corners are going to be background. So that means these large sides are focus fabric as well. And then little cross pieces here in each corner are going to be background. If you have a directional fabric, uh, you're going to want to take a pen or something. I use a ballpoint pen so that it's different than the Sharpie to indicate the direction that you want each piece to be in. So you don't have to relay it out when you get to uh, your block prep because you're going to take this and you're going to stick it in a baggie and then they all get jumbled up. So that way you can already know how to put them without having to reset up your block. So I'm going to take a piece of paper and um, label this D1 and occasionally I use these pieces of paper for notes or something that I may need for the bag. Um, I'm going to take this paper, stick it in a baggie and dump my pieces in here and move on to the next block. So we're up to D2. D2 is this very complicated looking block but it is modified in the English paper piecing. So we're going to look here and we've got these little triangles and octagons. There's four octagons and then there's these four trapezoidal pieces with flat edges on them with the triangles on the outside. So there's four little octagon pieces out here and if you notice they're not equilateral octagons like a stop sign. So you've got this side is longer than this side. So it's going to matter whether or not you put it this way or this way. It's going to give it a different look. So you're going to want to make sure that you line this up properly. So like, for example, if I put this this way, it's not going to fit. It's not you. It's not the, or excuse me, it's not the piece. It's the way you're putting it in there. So if you just rotate it like that, and I'm going to tell you, it took me a long time to figure out what I was doing wrong because I could not figure out why these pieces were not fitting. So don't feel bad. I actually had to go to many people in frustration and say, why is this not working? And one of my fellow guild members said, well, you know, if you turn it so that this side is there, you won't have that problem. And of course, I felt like a tool. So this is the answer to it. So you don't have to feel like a tool. All right, so I got these four placed correctly, and then I'm going to find all my little pieces here to fill in the outside, and these are for this guy. So I thought that something was messed up, and I put everything away because I could not find these pieces. But if I was to read the note on the bottom, it says that the octagons are appliqued to the center, which means that this thing here, this square, is a piece of paper that you then, see I put all the stuff away so I don't have to resort it, but then you then applique these two. And this is why I'm making the video, so that you don't have to make the same mistakes I do. So, we have now got our octagons, and so you're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach these to each other in a medallion. And then you're gonna attach them to this square. <laughs> I'm sitting here searching for these teeny tiny triangles. So, this is the square that goes behind the octagons, next to the trapezoids, okay? <laughs> and then you've got the triangles, which I have to find again. So I'm going to set this over here, and then I'm going to find all the pieces. Actually, I'm going to set this down here so I don't lose it. But anyway, I'm going to find all the pieces, and then when I, light, when I lay these out, these are going to be white because they're not actually in the bag because it's one big square. So let me relay all this out, and we'll go from there. So... Now that we've got all this sorted out, this is what you should have plus this square for this block. So you've got these four triangles and these trapezoids and these four octagons in the center and one big square. These pieces don't exist, <laughs> just to reiterate. All right, so now I'm gonna mark these all with the label of D2. Now I'm gonna label my focus fabric and 
The focus fabric is going to be this, each of the octagons, which means the square is background. And then these are background because these little guys have been taken off. These little pieces are not there. So then these outer triangles are background, or excuse me, are focus fabric. So you should have focus fabric dots on the outer triangles and the inner octagons. And that's all. If you have a directional fabric, I would mark for directional. And I'm going to put this in my baggie now that I've figured it out and move on to the next block. Next block is D3. D3 is also a modified block. The modification is that this has been segmented into four parts. So the D3 is going to have one of the four and a half inch squares. So I've got that here. And then you've got four arrow pieces with the square parts facing the center. So this is a very straightforward sort. I'm going to place these and then don't forget that if you have a directional, this is a great time to mark it. But I'm also going to put my D3 and my focus fabric. If I can open my pen. So we've got D3 on each of these. Just hold them down and write on them. D3. And then the focus fabric, according to the picture, is the center portion. One, two, three three, four, and I'm going to bag this and move on to the next block. Okay, we're up to D4. D4 is also modified. It's a very slight modification. I've taken these and made them bigger to go to the corners, which has changed the proportion of the block. So make sure that you sort on this piece here, and then you've got your four pieces. Uh, these so I will put those out there you've got your four and a half inch square for this one as well and then you've got these kind of triangles now these triangles are not equilateral as you've seen so I can put one like this but I can also take it and spin it incorrectly so make sure that you label the top so I will put, I will figure out how to do that. Let me find the square for the center. This seems, to, are they, are the two of them the same size? They seem to be. Yep, the two of them are the same size. So I'm gonna put this here. Now let me lay the rest of these pieces out. So I've got my pieces laid out, and I'm gonna mark on, and mark on each one the D4. So now that I've got them labeled, I'm going to mark my focus fabric, which essentially is all these pieces in the center here, because you've got all this red. So all of the pieces here are focus fabric, and this is a background. So I will just put dots on these, on all of these. All right, but before I put these away, I'm going to do... A little bit of marking here and I'm gonna put a star or in this case I'm just gonna put a star on the edges the outside points of these so that I don't screw this up when I go to assemble because that would just really suck and it just look would it wouldn't you you may not be able to tell until after you get it all together and they're like oh yeah I did that so and then I'm gonna put this registration marks here so that when I get to this block I can say, oh, that's why I put the stars there. So you've got the same mark on your pieces that you do your drawing. So I will bag this up and move on to the next one. So next is D5. D5 is not modified, so we're going to sort directly from the book here. And I've got these little squares. So I've got these four tiny, tiny, tiny squares that I'm assuming are these yep, these pieces. Okay, so I got these four little squares and then my other big square goes in the center and then I have rectangles on the outside and there's a triangle in the center or the out, outer corner which is obviously bigger than that. That looks like it fits. 
Let's find out. Okay. And then we'll get these all sorted and organized. And then I've got two pieces that have angles on the outside. One shorter than the other. That one and this one. So I will get these all, the rest of these, put in their right place and move on. So the pieces are laid out now for my D5. And I will label each piece, even the little tiny, tiny ones. Now I'm going to label these for focus fabric. My focus fabric is going to be my center square. And all these, these little teeny tiny squares, you're going to get a little tiny red dot. And then the center triangles, well not the center triangles, the triangles in the center of the outer section. And the outer parts and this section here are going to be background. So I will put these in a, ba in a bag and move on to the next one. So now we're doing D6. D6 is quite a straightforward block. And... Just like the other octagons, there is a wrong and a right way. This is clearly the wrong way. So make sure that you turn it so that the correct side and it fits exactly. And then you've got the thinner ones of these because there's thicker and there's thinner. So the thinner ones are going to be for this. And then there's a bunch of triangles left. And four of them are for here and four of them are for this block. And I don't know, they are not the same size because that would just be convenient. So the smaller, let's do this over here. The smaller of the two are going to be for the next block, which is the last block. So this is the bigger one on the left. So I'm going to put this over here for D7. And I'm just going to, this because this is the right size I want, I'm going to measure it to those. So, but make sure... Let me make sure I check this first. Maybe. Yep, okay. So this is my comparison. I'm gonna just go through every one of these. That's a correct one. That is a smaller one. Because visually these look very, very close until you get them right next to each other. So that should be the four for D7. And the rest of these should be for my D6 block. And they are. So let me get these in place. So these are now in place. And there's not that many pe pieces to label, but I will... Oops, my marker doesn't want to work now. D6. So I will finish labeling these. So now I'm going to mark my focus fabric, which is going to be the center and the outside triangles. And even though this is one big piece of fabric, Make sure that you, if you have a directional fabric, you want to mark your outer triangles before you put them in your bag. And I will bag this up and we can get to the last block. So D7, I'm going to grab my pieces for the rest of this bag and place them where they go because there's no options left to what is what. So let me lay this block out. So now I've got all of the pieces of D7 laid out, and I'm going to label them with my D7, of course. Now I'm going to mark my focus fabric, and my focus fabric is the big outer arrow pieces on each four corner, and then the triangles in the center section-ish. So the outer bars are background, and the center square is background. Make sure that if you do have a directional fabric that you label the pieces before you put them in your bag. And I will bag this up and stick them in my baggie. And this concludes the bag sort for bag number one of the Row D Paper Pieces Kit.